hurry. But you can't call me hurry, can you? I'm not allowed to, but I, just, I said it anyway. Yeah, because uh, you have to remember that we're in Bangladesh now. <laughs> uh, you okay? Okay. Um, I'll try. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks for coming. And uh, everybody, welcome to Asra Chaudhary's show. This is the first uh, show and hopefully there will be more uh, in future. Today we have with you Rasan Noor, the director, lead actor, script writer and what else did you do in the movie, Bengali Beauty? That's about it. Um, we are uh, we are a large team that uh, you know, saved me on many occasions. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, b before we start, I'd like to say that uh, I knew simply nothing about Bengali beauty before I watched it. Normally what I do, um, my daughter and I, we go to Cineplex, which is just a rickshaw ride from here, and uh, she chooses the movie. So basically I just tag along with her. Last time she watched the movie, I can't name it, I slept in the middle, <laughs> and, and, and then she had to wake me up. So that day, it was a Friday I think, and uh, we were deciding what movie to watch. And I told her, no, this time I'm going to make the choice. So I looked at the, uh, the Bangla movies and I saw Bengali Beauty. And all I saw was, is based on a plot of 1975. That's it. And, uh, and you hooked. And that got me hooked. Yeah. And also the name. Because the name, uh, you know, it, it has lots of, uh, it has a dual meaning. Mm -hmm. I mean, what type of uh, plot will it be, etc, etc. Right. And uh, then we went and we missed the first 10 minutes because we were stuck in the jam. Yeah. And when we were buying the ticket, the lady in front of us, uh, she was buying a ticket and the printer got out of order. <laughs> so they, they had to sell the t ticket manually. So uh, then we entered and uh, the first scene that we saw was you, you and your dad, you're returning back home and your dad has the, those transistors. Yes, transistors. And probably uh, there, were, there was uh, so those big uh, V-sized batteries inside and he was listening and uh, you were quite grumbling that uh, Bangla song hasn't changed since, since the 1500s. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so then I started watching, and uh, and I watched to the end. And you didn't fall asleep. Uh, this, this time I didn't fall asleep. No, no, you're just being nice. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I didn't fall asleep yeah. because one thing I liked about your movie was the uh, dialogue. Thank you. Uh, the dialogue was extremely powerful, and uh, it was always keep, keeping you know suspense. And another thing, I don't know whether this was uh, intentional or not. None of the clips that you used, except for the songs, were more than two minutes. Yeah, it was intentional. Uh, why did you do that? Uh, just to keep the film fast-paced, uh, to keep uh, each scene moving uh, from scene to scene. I think we had one scene that was a little bit longer than two minutes. That was probably the... Uh, the last one, where DJ Mita said, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, she was saying your... Uh, no, but that has a lot of sequences within it. Oh, yeah. uh, uh -huh. The scene is the one where I go to Toya's home. Okay. Um, right after interval. Okay. And uh, uh, and Toya's horud was uh, 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 happening that day, right? It was the day that my character finds out that Toya's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tushi comes and yeah, yeah, yeah. this and that. So since I I knew nothing about you or your movie, and all of a sudden I see Mr. Ashfi Griswold. <laughs> yes. Who uh, Chasa Chaudhary. Chasa Chaudhary, who we from Jangi Nagar yeah. we know as uh, Sushant, and uh, my father and his father they were colleagues. So I said, well, I was, it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. I mean, I it's a surprise, you didn't get shocked? Uh, I did get shocked later on with his acting. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic, it's fantastic. <laughs> and then I see Naziba. Yes. And uh, Because I know her from Daily Star. Yeah. And uh, one thing uh, um, that uh, went through my mind was, you uh, used uh, novice actresses, actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. Uh, to okay, Toya did some short films. Mm -hmm. She's also familiar in the drama scene. Yeah. Okay, but this was her first movie. Correct. First movie also for Ashfi. Correct. First movie also for uh, Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Now, was it intentional to use uh, the, the new faces? Yeah, that was also an intentional choice uh, because uh, you you know when you use more known faces, they have a certain branding attached to them. People kind of expect something. So um, we wanted to, obviously we delivered a film that's much different than everything else. So we didn't want to ruin that expectation by having someone where the audience already expects something from them. So we gave them something new with completely new faces. Okay, that, that was intentional. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, you, you, you pulled it out quite well. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, but before we start with Bengali Beauty and etc. 
Uh, one thing I've noticed from all the uh, interviews that I've uh, 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 watched mm -hmm. on, on YouTube, uh, none of the interviews were talking about that you did two other movies before Bengali Beauty. And before that, I think as a student, uh, oh, before, uh, before I forget, both of our uh, econ graduates. Yes. Yeah. So you yes. graduated in economics. Intellectual. Intellectual. <laughs> so uh, uh, can you start from the movie that you did in your student life, and then we will proceed from, from there on? Okay. Uh, well, it wasn't that, uh, exactly my student life. In my student life, I made a, like a thirty-minute short film for my parents on anniversary, and people really liked it, so they kept asking me for more. So after I graduated, uh, finally, I kind of. Uh, decided, okay, I'll, I'll make a feature film, uh, but I, I'm, a, I'm a grown person now, I'm not a kid, so I'm going to do something that means something. So I made a film that raised money for charity, Okay. Uh, but the film itself was, you know, just uh, masala, type of, like a 1980s masala type film. But you made $40,000 uh, yeah. from it? Yeah, to raise money for charity, uh, it's uh, right here in Hanmundi, the school, Shishu Bikash Kendra. Okay. Uh, we visited the school a couple of weeks back. Okay. And uh, inshallah, we'll be uh, hosting the uh, kids to watch Bengali Beauty at the Cineplex very soon as well. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And uh, then uh, you did your first movie was uh, 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 Shimana Hate. So that's. Uh, in 2013. Right. So there's an underreported thing. Uh, I've actually made, after Kings of Devon, okay. uh, I actually made an independent Hollywood film called uh, Promised Land. Oh, I, uh, I didn't know about that one. Yeah, Sorry. So no one really does, uh, but I made a, I acted in a film called Promised Land. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first uh, film after Kings of Devon. And then after um, Promised Land is when I, I do Shivanahin. And uh, Shivanahin was a violent film that was set in the United States. Mostly uh, NRBs mm -hmm. that were involved with that, and uh, we had good success with it actually, uh, okay. uh, business-wise, and it allowed me to make a, my first Bollywood film. Okay, that's my title, Jihad Okay, that was I think in 2015, two that, years later. Yeah, it released in 2015. Okay, um, so uh, it was uh, it was a different genre of film that I had uh, done before. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it didn't do, uh, it didn't uh, meet the expectations of uh, what we expected out of it. But um, I learned a lot about films, film industry, myself as an actor mm -hmm. uh, from that film. And you know, that whole, all those experiences tied together kind of brought me to be called a beauty. Okay, but uh, the, the first two films, Shriman yeah, that's based on uh, NRB, uh, love story between a Hindu and a Muslim. Correct. Okay, yeah. and the Taz Rohin, that's also an NRB experience after 9-11. Right. I mean, not just NRB, it's a, it is trying to capture like the Muslim community, mm -hmm. uh, how NYPD kind of uh, unjustly kind of entraps Muslims into ratting each other out, even though you know, a lot of us, most of us are innocent. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of us, most of us. And most of us, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, so it was about that theme. It was an interesting theme. Maybe it could have been made better, but uh, you know, we, we drew a lot of praise for our acting in the film. Um, I feel like... Um, I made a, I personally made a huge leap in acting from Shimani to to Tazri. Uh, I I noticed one uh, leap, okay. and that is uh, in Bengali BT your Bangla has really really improved. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I I try very very hard. Um, people still make fun of my Bangla. It's okay. I'll still keep uh, uh, speaking Bangla with my accent and um, that Bangla. <laughs> that Bangla Bangla. <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep saying it, so I have no problem with it. Okay. No, because uh, 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 the clips that I watched in YouTube. Yeah. Uh, the Bangla in Shimanahin and the Bangla in Bengali Beauty. Hmm. You made a big improvement. Yeah, I would say so. I, I will also credit uh, Ripunath, our sound uh, designer for okay. the film. Uh, he spent three weeks with me dubbing this film and making sure that my pronunciation. Oh, and okay. Was right. Okay. So, you know, my other artists, their dubbing was done in like two or three days, man. It took three weeks. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, but it, it was a big improvement from Shimanahin, that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, when you did Bengali Beauty, and then uh, we see you as a director, as the lead actor, scriptwriter. I mean, that's not unusual. Mm -hmm. Lots of big directors have, uh, uh, you know, right. uh, acted in their own film, like Charlie Chaplin, yeah. uh, even Orson Welles. Yeah. Guru Dutt. Guru Dutt. Raj Kapoor. Raj Kapoor and who, who Clint not? Eastwood. Huh? Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, yeah, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. And who not? And uh, lot, lots of the big, big uh, directors have also written their script play. Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, 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 the Shotajit, right? Mm -hmm. he, he also did the music. Okay. And uh, except for Pothar Bhattali, uh, yeah. that, that was Ravi Shankar. Yeah. And uh, so, the, what challenges did you fa face doing all, all them? 
I think the biggest challenge was since this was my first film professionally doing all three, um, my cast and crew and a lot of other people, they just didn't have the confidence in me. Um, so overcoming that lack of confidence or that lack of respect was the, the biggest challenge. Uh, I mean, we got to the point where even after uh, we were done filming, between the time we were done filming and before we had released the first trailer, uh, four different people on the team had requested that their name be removed from the film. Oh dear. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that was my biggest challenge. Okay. Yeah. So you finally you did overcome them. I don't know if I've overcome them, but I hope, you know, uh, I don't know, I, I don't want to say that I proved myself, but I uh, I hope that uh, the team is happy with the quality product that we uh, put out there. But the way I see it, even a, a disaster is a big experience. <laughs> so at least I don't think it's a disaster. A, yeah. Even a dis any failure or, you know, setbacks. Yeah. So, because you know where the troubleshootings are. Yeah. So next time you can be more careful. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be much more careful. <laughs> So let's come back to uh, Bengali Beauty now, yeah. uh, 1975, okay, so we are more familiar with some films uh, uh, just uh, 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 you know, during 71 and also just after liberation and then we come down to the 1980s. Mm -hmm. 75 is basically a very uh, blank year in our uh, cinema. And it's from 1971 to 1975 is a blank period in just Banashi history. Like it's been completely erased. Uh, well, what do you think so? Well, I mean, when I went to look for official documents to research for the film, it wasn't there. When I went uh, to look for videos or news clippings, it wasn't there. Okay. The only news clippings that uh, were available, uh, or the only news that was available was uh, American news reports about Bangladesh's assassination. Hmm. And that's the only thing that was available. Everything else that was researched was uh, Oral history. Oral history, okay. And uh, as you can tell, uh, it's a very contentious and uh, debated history. Mm -hmm. one, one person says one thing happened, another person says another thing happened. So, uh, you've seen the film. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make any political claims, but I do try to capture how the average person was discussing the events of the time. Uh, during 1975? During 1975, yeah. Okay. So, like, yeah, there's some maybe political commentary in the film, but it's mm -hmm. not, I'm not trying to present it as truth. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to present it is that people talk like this. Okay. But uh, after watching it myself, yeah. and since you're an expat, yeah. okay, I got the impression that uh, 1975 or that particular period was probably a period when your mom and dad were growing up. Absolutely. My mom was uh, 14. Okay. My dad had left the country already by then. He was in the United States at uh, Duke University. Oh, so that's why you, you, you sport the Duke Absolutely. Yeah, okay, I got so, okay yeah. now we understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know, okay. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, your grandpa, he was also a journalist, I think. Yeah, my dad was a journalist. Okay, and that, uh, so that's why Afzal Khan's father is also a journalist in the movie. Yes. So it was very much trying to reconnect back to your uh, uh, family ties in Bangladesh? Yeah, I think it's a unique vantage point. I think um, it also creates, you know, the dichotomy of uh, you know, the Bengali beauty theme that I wanted to present, uh, you know, fitting into society, or Manushki Bobe, Manushki Bhakti, those type of things. Like you were born a Pakistani, now you're a proud Bangladeshi, but everybody keeps on calling you American. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, growing up in America, everyone thought I was Indian. When I go to India, everyone thinks I'm Bangladeshi. And mm -hmm. when I'm in Bangladesh, everyone thinks I'm American. So you're, you're, you're a misfit no matter where you go? I'm, not, I'm just an outcast misfit, yeah. So uh, it's basically the diaspora. That, uh, you're, you're the diaspora. I don't even know. I, I, I just think, you know, uh, I, I kind of see... Some of my favorite characters in, in, in literature are, you know, like, or films is you know, Indiana Jones or mm -hmm. James Bond. So I kind of I enjoy you know traveling, um, you know we were talking earlier about you know some of our favorite literature and the, at that time there were you know, travel logs, mm -hmm. you know Marco Polo, oh yeah definitely those type of things. So maybe you know in that same vein you're just being someone who kind of has traveled the world, someone who's mixed with a lot of different cultures, just kind of sharing my experiences and my perspective on things, which is very different I think than from other people. Okay. Now, I'd like to share my personal uh, feelings about the film and why, the reason why I watched it three times. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Of the five days. Yeah. 
Why watched, did you torture yourself so much? <laughs> <laughs> I watched it on Saturday yeah. with my daughter, Tuesday on my own, yeah. and uh, on Thursday with my daughter and a friend of hers. If you watch it one more time, you'll probably have watched it more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> No, I know, I've seen the movie many, many times. You don't have to uh, catch up. A lot of catching up to do. The, the last time I watched the movie many times was Cinema Paradiso. Yeah. And uh, what I think as a viewer, I mean, you guys make a cinema. That's high praise, by the way. So, cinema Paradiso is a very loved film. I haven't seen it myself, but okay. I know how much people love that film. You haven't seen it? Unfortunately not. I, uh, I found a, a clip in your movie yeah. that resembled uh, Cinema Paradiso. Yeah. I mean, on 15th August, you uh, decided to meet Beauty mm -hmm. at Modubita. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you Spoiler go, alert. Uh, sorry? <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> and, and then uh, you yeah. go and find that uh, the cinema hall is empty yeah. because she couldn't come. Yeah. Okay, uh, because of the fateful event yeah. of 15th August. Mm -hmm. But similar thing happens in Cinema Paradiso. Okay. Salvatore and Elena, yeah. they uh, they uh, they decide they'll meet in the cinema Paradiso yeah. and then they'll flee away. Okay. But uh, Elena's father uh, did uh, made sure that she didn't go there, etc. Yeah. etc. Et so that the, so that wasn't any co uh, resemblance with cinema Paradiso. I've never seen the film. Um, and then you know, similarly, uh, Kings of Devon, okay, my, my uh, charity film. Uh, I had never watched Godfather before I made that film. Okay, and I watched Godfather after All right. um, Kings of Devon, and when I watched Godfather, I was like, "This is the same story as, as Kings of Devon." Okay, so you know, I, I guess as they say, um, there's nothing new under the sun. No, that the yeah. uh, basic things they they're the same. Yeah. So you uh, that means you have to watch Cinema Paradiso. I must watch it. Yeah. You must watch it. You watch it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, coming back to Cinema Paradiso, it has two versions. Okay. It has the theatrical version and it also has a director's cut. Mm -hmm. Does by Bengali Beauty have a director's cut? Because I noticed something, uh, a one little scene where you can start a director's cut. Okay, uh, we don't have a director's cut. Uh, okay, but where can I add a director's cut? Okay, that's when uh, when you went to visit uh, Sara Alam, DJ Mita, uh -huh. and you gave you uh, her the last the program script. Yeah, and then you said, "I'm not a cook, John Priyo Juti." Huh. Yeah, and then she uh, blushes a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. So you can start a director's cut from the, there. Okay. Because beauty's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're saying a sequel? <laughs> sequel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I th I think uh, we can end this film where it is. No, yeah. I think uh, yeah. the ending has been fantastic. Thank you. Because uh, the be be and another thing was it it was based on you know adolescence. The innocent feelings mm -hmm. that we go through mm -hmm. before we become adult yeah. and look back and see, uh, think how stupid we were, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you know, yeah. naive we were at, at that time. I think you know, even as adults, um, we are naive and stupid, and it takes you know time to. Oh yeah, yeah. To show it takes that. a lot of time. Yeah. Now your beauty, okay? Uh, I am um, the way that I saw you portrayed beauty in two ways. Okay. Number one, when she's a Bengali. Then and she has all the Bengali you, 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 uh, attributes, her dresses, mm -hmm. her, her, her yeah. hairstyle, etc., etc. Then we see uh, the, the change in her. For example, uh, in the song, uh, 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 what was it? Hello, uh, And uh, over there, I noticed that her appearance looked very much like Sophia Loren. Mm -hmm. Her eyes. Try it. And was that intentional or that looks like Sophia Loren? Okay, so that's yeah. that's natural. Yeah. So it wasn't that you were searching for somebody looking like Sophia Loren. It looks like Sophia Loren. Uh, that's the same thing that I, uh, I felt because yeah. uh, uh, you know when she was wearing those uh, red glasses yeah. and she was looking, uh, you know, smiling at you yeah. uh, or blushing, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, she was looking exactly like Sophia Loren. Yeah. But the costume in that song, Dujana Dujana, that was very much uh, Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. The, most of the costumes were inspired by Audrey Hepburn because obviously she's a fashion icon, mm -hmm. uh, and I love her films, Roman Holiday, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I'm a big fan. Okay. Um, so you'll see throughout the film, I, I do pay as a director, I pay homage to a lot of my favorite films, uh, whether it's Good Morning Vietnam, whether it's uh, Apocalypse Now, Silsila, Dilwale Dilhanje, Dilwale Dilhanje Le Jenge, Audrey Hepburn's films. Uh, so. There's uh, La La Land. No, we will say La La Land. Okay. So, okay. So yeah, the, the, that's what I saw. So, when yeah. it, I mean, uh, the Western Beauty was a mixture between uh, Sophia Loren and Audrey Hepburn. Mm -hmm. Was I mean that was just to create you know a distinction between 
uh, real time and fantasy mm -hmm. uh, because we had to make a huge leap and uh, so that's um, that was the purpose of that. I think the second, the real second Bengali beauty in the film is the commentary that we have on Bengali culture, mm -hmm. um, which is very prevalent throughout the film and its theme. The music. Yes. Can we talk about the music? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, the title track uh, Aru Athare, that was very 70-ish. Yeah. And uh, the movie poster was also look, uh, looking 70-ish, you know, the uh, hippie generation. Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, well, so you intentionally dressed up like that. Yes. And your, your face, facial, you know, the beards and everything. Yeah, my John Lennon look. The John Lennon look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, with that green uh, yeah. olive the jacket. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually talking about Jaire Jaire song. Okay. Because uh, in that song, we get two towns. Yeah. I mean, it starts with Kaharba. Yeah. Four plus four. Yeah. And then, but the tempo is okay. Mm -hmm. Then they break the tempo and mm -hmm. it goes to Dadra. Yeah. So what happens within that same uh, slot, time slot? Yeah. Your, the music is slowing down. Mm -hmm. Three plus three. Yeah. And then you come back to Kaharba again. Yeah. Now this isn't unique. Okay. In uh, music composition. Yeah. But it's extremely rare to see something like uh, this type of a composition in a Bangla movie. Yeah. Um, so. I want to make a clarification on the film and, and the film's music. Okay. Um, we had, in the beginning, another individual composed the music for the film. He's a dear friend of mine. And um, we shot with that music. And uh, after we shot, as we were editing and as we were going to release, we just kind of, as a team, everyone felt that the music was not working. Okay. So later on, since it was not working, we uh, brought on uh, Rusha Mata, who's my mama. Okay. Oh, and he's your mama. Yeah. He also did the music for, direction in one of your films. For Shimanahi. Shimanahi, you're yeah, right. And he's a very, he's a, out of my entire family, my family might hate me for saying this, but I think the one person who could be classified as a genius is my Rusha mama. Is he, a, is he your Choto mama? He's my uh, Choto mama. He's my only my Apo mama. I'm oh. my Choto mama. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So, um, so there's a special connection with Choto mamas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my mom wants me to change the name of my company to uh, Mama, uh, Mama, 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 Mama. Mama. <laughs> So um, he came in later. Okay. And he recomposed all the songs. Only one that he was able to compose from scratch was Alo Okay. Because we had not shot that because that was not lip sync. Okay. Uh, so that's the reason, especially in Jairi Ude, you mm -hmm. see the lip sync sync mismatch because it was mm -hmm. recomposed later. Oh. And. Um, okay. My, uh, with that song in particular, my mama told me, he's like, uh, uh, he said, uh, I'm having a lot of trouble with this song, can I just change the tempo oh, of the song? Oh, so that's how it came to this uh, Feta Ta. Yeah. No, no, it was like that. He did, I don't think, I don't know if my original mama likes that type of uh, structure, but it was like that. And originally it was like that. And like, it was, I think originally it was like that, so he still changed it somewhat to mm -hmm. make it smoother. Okay. Uh, to make it uh, more pleasing to, uh, uh, to, his, uh, to everyone's sentiments. Okay. I think um, I th when I hear the music song, I love it. I think it's a great song. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I also noticed that yeah, in, in places the lips don't match. Don't match. And, because uh, the ta because the see, you see the tiles change. Yeah. Four plus four, three yeah. plus three, it four was plus just, four. Uh, it was just a production mismanagement that we had on our okay. side. Uh, inshallah, in the future No, but even that mismanagement turned out quite well in my yeah. ears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, and uh, another thing about the movie. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, none of the uh, scenes were more than two minutes. Yeah. You, you, you did that intentionally. Yeah. And you came back and uh, you, you uh, to some specific quotes. Mm -hmm. Like, what uh, The Dutta Prem, what do you say? Should just stay on the... Oh, I forgot it, come on. I, I remember, give me one second. Do you pray when you come to the end of the day? Do you pray when you come to the end of the day? Do you pray when you come to the end of the day? Do you pray Okay, and that was one of the catchy quotes. Yeah. But the main catchy quote that I liked was uh, the last one. Uh, right. I, I, I love that because uh, that basically uh, concludes the cinema yeah. fantastically. Yeah. And but Sarah did a fantastic job to the beautiful, movie, right? Beautiful. Fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. In fact, uh, the three times that I watched it, I was waiting for that part, the yeah. last part. <laughs> And uh, I would be too. Huh? I would be too. Yeah. And, uh, and and it gave an open ending. Yeah. But it finished with hope. Mm -hmm. That's the point. We don't want to be sad. It's uh -huh. supposed to be a hopeful film. 
Uh, you can be melancholic, yeah. but uh, not, not depressed or sad. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, um, uh, uh, another one little problem with Bengali beauty that I had, and also my daughter also complained, yeah. was the time timing of the show. It was 2.15, yes. and uh, the first time we watched it was on Saturday, so it was a holiday for her. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesday I went, Thursday, luckily it was Puja holiday. Mm -hmm. So she was free and we could take one of her friends with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that timing quite inconvenient. I mean, maybe there's lots of reasons for that. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, uh, hopefully, uh, is there any possibility that uh, you would screen uh, Bengali Beauty again in Bangladesh? Uh, we're not holding on hope. I think uh, the last week, even though the time was inconvenient, we sold out pretty much every show. Mm -hmm. And uh, on f on social media, our you know our supporters, our fans of the film, they're kind of um, they want to, they want more of it. So unfortunately, I don't own any of the cinema halls in Bangladesh. But hopefully, you know, um, we value as 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 an industry, we value the customer and the, what the customer wants. And I f believe that the past week proved mm. that the customer does want Bengali beauty. And uh, I can tell you that my daughter wants it. <laughs> and also, her that's the most important. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yesterday, when we went, yeah. uh, one of our friends went with us, yeah. and she was a little bit, uh, you know, sad with this ending. Yeah. And I said, why, "Why are you sad?" And she said, "No." Uh, there was, it wasn't a happy ending, and I told her, "Mama, you wait, <laughs> grow up. You'll find out that's life. You know, that's <laughs> life. That's life." And she was, and then I told her that this was the last show, yeah. and she was a little bit cross. Yeah, I mean, like we said, uh, we've put in our request. We've, we've. I mean, I don't know what more requests we can put in. I think we've proved that the film is running. You were there for three of those shows. You can yeah, also, you know, share that. Yeah, the hall was full, and that people were going. And uh, at a very odd showtime. At a very odd showtime. And, uh, people are. I've noticed that people are requesting better. So um, let's hope for the best. Let's hope for the best. Uh, we put in. Uh, we've respectfully put in uh, the request. And uh, beyond that, I think you know, as a filmmaker, we're just grateful that the movie played in the cinema hall to begin with. You know, not mm -hmm. everyone gets that opportunity. It's not a right to have your film play in the cinema hall. It's not your right to make a movie, it's not your right to promote a movie. These are all privileges. Right. And uh, I'm very lucky to have this privilege. And, uh, and you use the best of the opportunity you've got. Absolutely. You have to play the cards that you're dealt. Right. And uh, I hear that you're making another movie. Yes. And uh, you're directing that one as well? Yeah, we haven't made that decision yet. Okay. Um, but uh, I've written the script. Um, and uh, we're just, because of all this, uh, Hype and hoopla! I'm going to England in two days. Mm -hmm. um, I'm promoting the film there. Um, it's releasing on November second. I'm speaking at the House of Commons uh, day after tomorrow. Oh dear! And That's nice. Yeah, it's it's a huge uh, uh, nerve-wracking thing, um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. And um, so after those things kind of settle down, then we'll get into uh, you know building the team, uh, staffing the crew, casting the mm -hmm. cast, type of things. So after your experience in with Bengali Beauty this time. Dude, uh, I mean, as an expat, hmm. I mean, we have Bangladeshi movies made by Bangladeshi people, yeah. but very few movies made by the expat. Right. Uh, and their experience of the Bangladeshi diaspora or Bangladeshi experience, etc. Yeah. So you have uh, plans to do more movies in the future? I have plans to do more films. I mean, Regarding Bangladesh it? experience? Yeah, I think I don't want to just tie myself to just Bangladeshi experience. I obviously see myself as someone who has access and exposure to a lot of different cultures mm -hmm. and so I'm going to be making films across the board but definitely I'm going to be making more Bangladeshi stories without a doubt. Okay, that's for sure. Yeah. That's good. Okay then, and uh, is there anything uh, that this first Ashra Chodhi show didn't cover that you would like to say? No, I think uh, this covered everything. I think first of all I'd like to thank you for no, no, pleasure. You, you had no idea who I was. No, I have to thank you. <laughs> Um, but I'm glad that you enjoyed the film. I'm glad that your daughter enjoyed the film, uh, and I hope that many more can continue to enjoy the film. We just want to keep giving them um, that opportunity. Okay then, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully uh, this won't be the last Asha Choudhury show. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, thank you very much. And special thanks to Ashvi Krishwan, Chacha Choudhury. He couldn't be here today because the he had one something. And only. <laughs> the one and only. <laughs> 
So, and uh, let's not uh, repeat his dialogues. Uh, uh, but he did a good job. And uh, Sushant, thanks, thanks a lot for arranging this interview. And bye to bye to everybody. Bye.